On this special episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Brazilian training ship Cisne Bronco learns the meaning of low bridge while on a port visit in Ecuador. Hi, I'm your host, Sam Caglano. I just want to do a special video because uh, we're getting uh, images of the Brazilian training ship Cisne Bronco. Uh, it was on a port visit in Ecuador, and the vessel got loose from a tug that was towing it and was set down upon on a bridge. And this incident actually involved the loss of a vessel, although it was not the Cisne Bronco. So let me take over the story from GCAP. So this is a story from GCAP, and Mike Scheller did this. So the Brazilian Navy tall ship Cisne Bronco, she was built in the Netherlands in the year 2000. Uh, she's sister ship to the Stad Amsterdam. Uh, she's part of the Royal Brazilian Navy. So she is, she, excuse me, the Brazilian Navy, the Royal Brazilian Navy. That's, that's a long time ago, the Royal Brazilian Navy. Uh, she is a training ship for the vessel. A lot of navies around the world have sail training vessels. Uh, in the US, the uh, Coast Guard has the Eagle, which was a former German vessel, a war prize from World War II. But this is a much newer vessel, again, built in 2000. Uh, some stats on her, just so you know, she's 249 feet long, a beam of 32 feet, 10 inches. Uh, she draws about 13 feet of water, and she does have a diesel engine, which can propel her at 11 knots. Uh, but again, one of the things I think we see here is the vessel either did not have its engine online or its engine was not sufficient to deal with the current of this river. And we'll, we'll go into the details here in a second. So uh, the story that Mike Schuller has here has some links over to a specific Twitter feed from one Carlos Sanchez Arazamina. I'm going to go with that. I apologize for to Juan Carlos if I got his name wrong. I'm going to go over to his site because one of the things he has here, I'm going to show you some of the, the sites he has on here and some of the images he has, which are great. Uh, this is an image right here. I'm going to go ahead and let this play right here. You'll see the vessel right here is pinned up against the bridge at the time. You'll notice this large tug right here. Uh, that tug was probably assisting the vessel, the Cisne Bronco, come in. Uh, what happened with Bronco is, is the Guianas River right here has a huge current running down it. This runs off the Andes Mountains. And obviously the ship got broadside, uh, was pushed in here. I'm gonna show you some images too that uh, kind of explain maybe what happened. We don't have the full details yet. I've looked at the postings here and the translation. I'm not fluent in, in Spanish uh, or Portuguese in the different languages this is in. So I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the images right here, because again, he has some other ones here, which I think are really good. So let's go back here for a second. Go down here for a few others. He's got others on his Twitter feed. This is literally just right off his Twitter feed. I'm going to come back to this one right here. Uh, I want to show you one of the images right here, which I think is a really interesting one. He's got a picture here. Nope, that's not it right there. Let me find his picture that he had on So this is the one that's on G Captain. And one of the things you see here is uh, north is, is to the left of the screen, south is to the right of the screen right there. The river is setting from north to south. You can see this is a walkway bridge with a drawbridge right here to come in. And it's pretty clear that the vessel had come through the drawbridge, probably being towed by this tug. She's not obviously under sail. There's no sails on the vessel. She's got an engine, like I said, she could propel her, but in high current like this, probably a good idea to have a tug. It looks like they had this large tug at the bow for pulling it and a smaller tug here to help maneuver through the bridge. Uh, the small tug is trying to push her off the bridge. She's got no chance of doing that, none whatsoever, to do it. And it doesn't look like there's a line hooked on between the larger tug and the uh, Cisne Bronco here. You can see her coming in. You can see the wind is actually coming from south to north here. Don't see a line off the vessel and everything like that. You can see the vessel striking right there, coming over at the time. You can see the tug kind of backing down here. And she may be trying to get a line across. It's hard to see uh, whether or not there was a line on it. If she had a line on it, it's pretty clear she would have been able to kind of pull her a little bit, but it doesn't look like there was any sort of uh, motion on her at all. I'm gonna come to this other image right here. So this is a still picture, but it's a really interesting still picture because you'll see her, her port anchor, her left anchor is dropped. 
So they got the anchor drop to try to get it underfoot to try to stop it. That was not going to stop this vessel, obviously. Not sure when she dropped it. You can see it's got about a 45 degree slant to it. So she grabbed hold, but not enough time. And even if that anchor had grabbed, the stern would have still kept swinging in. And instead of her going broadside to, the stern would have went in, which may have actually been worse if that happened. Actually going broadside to like this and the way that the rigging, it's actually the the rigging on the side of the vessel, the shrouds going up the side that takes the hit here, not so much on the mass, which is really important, I think, for it. You also don't see the smaller tug here. You don't see any lines hooked up to the other tug here. So that gives me an indication that she was not being hooked up at the time. I'll show you another scene right here. So this is marine traffic right here. Here is Ecuador on the west coast of South America right here. Uh, the Andes Mountains are right here. You can see the Andes right here. So again, the river has this huge flow. One of the things on the west coast of South America is a very steep gradient down to the ocean. So the river right here, I had a, a friend who sailed actually into this port not too long ago and reported a really stiff current here at the time. This is the track of the vessel that I was able to pull up off of basically marine traffic and then it, it, it drops off. This is the position from 22 hours ago and then it went dead. But if you look at the track here, I'm gonna run the track. There you go, this is the track running right now. Let me go ahead and pull it back up again. Uh, one thing I wanna do is move it a little bit. You can see right there, 1.5 knots. She's heading back down and then all of a sudden she increases speed there, almost three knots right there, then stops. That's probably when she hit, it's, it's not exactly clear right there and then she's being pulled back she's being pulled stern first right here away from the bridge now again this this track does not show her i'm going to go back and do it one more time right here and you see it and again this is one of the issues is you don't get a very good ais reading because it's so far inland it's probably distorting it a little bit it's why you don't see it hitting the bridge right here but you can see it all of a sudden the, maybe the line snap not sure but man she just took off at that point hits the bridge and then she's being pulled back off again. And again, this is from marine traffic. It doesn't show her actually hitting the bridge. It could be distortion on this reading. If you come back over here to Juan Carlos's site. So this image right here is after the collision. You can tell by a couple of things. Number one, the foretop here, the mass collapsed when she hit. You're seeing she's missing the, that part of her mass right here. Four mast, main mast, mizzen mast. You can see her flags are decorated. You don't have any flags here. You can see the rigging right here. This is her, the drawbridge is still open. This was the small tug that was at, was trying to push her off. Here's the bigger tug and they're pulling her now stern first. You can see the collapse right here of the, the, the stays that went up to the fore top right here. I do sailing history, sorry. So this, you get this experience right here. Uh, and she's being pulled off stern first by the tug. But one of the things you'll notice here is the smaller tug that was there to help control it, it gets herself sideways in here. And you'll see the incident that takes place that results in this. She's getting pulled and she's being pulled by the bigger tug in the vessel. And you see she broaches, goes sideways and rolls over. You see the line snap right there, engine still running. And from reports, what we're hearing is the crew was saved. Everybody in the crew that was on board here were able to get out off the vessel right here. You'll see some in the water right there. Some are literally on top of the tug right here calling for help. Uh, very harrowing scenario. When things go bad on the water, they go bad fast. And there's not a lot of time to react. So fortunately, they were able to get this crew off. There's another video here I'll show you. Let me pull it up here. This is a little bit more of a zoom in right here uh, on this that you see right here. So let's go ahead and play that right there. You'll see the tug being pulled. Uh, she's trying to get herself straightened out. And for some reason she gets sideways in the current right there. And because of that pull that they're doing on the vessel, she gets heaved over a little bit, water starts flowing in and then she just rolls. You see the line snap right there and she's gone. Fortunately, it's from the reports, everything we're seeing, and again, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but uh, based on reports, everybody was uh, rescued off this vessel. 
So I'm just going to come back to this original image we had here of the Cisne Bronco. Uh, you can see that the, the foremast there, the top of the foremast is still there. Uh, when she goes in, that's that small tug that eventually capsizes. She's, she's broached basically sideways into the current. She's going to hit right there. You'll see the shrouds hit and she takes that roll over. Fortunately, the mast kind of hang her up right there. She's got that anchor underfoot, but basically she's just hung up there in the current. One of the other things I noticed too on this, and I don't see any prop wash at all from the engine. So she does not have her engine going there. You would have seen prop wash of some kind. And the reason I say that is if you go back here earlier in it, you'll see from the small tug here, you see the prop wash right there from the small tug. You'll see it there from the big tug. You see the white froth coming out. There is no propulsion here at all. And again, snap that line on the smaller tug when she capsizes, may have lost that line going to the big tug. That could have been responsible. We know she gets a line across to the stern to pull her stern off. So they're able to get that stern line onto her and eventually get her off. So fortunately, no loss of life as we know, just a harrowing incident. And again, it goes back to that issue about how dangerous it can be maneuvering vessels in confined waters, especially with high currents, a lot of obstacles. Uh, this bridge is, is, is not in a great spot uh, to be in. Uh, again, you know, it, it, it comes right across here. You see it right here. Go uh, to the live map here. Uh, go, go to it right here. And you'll see uh, right here, it goes across this area right here. You can see this where the Bronco was, was listed a while ago. Uh, most of the terminal goes down here for the city is down here, lower end. You don't have to go through that bridge. And then even if you go up a little further, there's other bridges that block you going in. So anyway, just thought I'd share that. It's, it was an interesting story uh, about this. Uh, again, this is a Brazilian Navy vessel used for training on a visit to Ecuador. They typically will do these kind of voyages around. And fortunately, uh, nobody got hurt and hopefully we'll see a, a quick resolution to it.